The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome into a special episode. It is an extra where we are talking all NHL. Getting back into the hockey world, this is what we love to discuss, especially when it's just Jeremy and I. We might as well jump into some hockey and get into it. Uh, we're going to talk about the NHL so much more, but before we get into it, we want to first mention a sponsor of ours, and that is SeatGeek, because SeatGeek is amazing, and it is absolutely worth talking about. If you're a fan of live events, whether it's sports or music or theater, like maybe you like to go to a comedy show, whatever the case may be, any kind of live event or even parking, you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price and finding the right place to find them. That's where SeatGeek comes into play. With a seamless mobile experience, SeatGeek allows you to buy and sell tickets in just two taps. It doesn't get any simpler than that, folks. But it gets even better because SeatGeek, great, SeatGeek grades every ticket from red to green based on their value to help you immediately identify the best seats that fit your budget. So if you see that green dot, you found the best deal. Yellow, ah, keep on searching. Red, don't do it because it's not that good of a deal. So SeatGeek makes it very easy there. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed so you can shop securely and with a complete peace of mind, knowing that the tickets that you're buying are going to be A-OK -okay, and they're going to scan in at the front door. Plus, you know that your, your information isn't being stolen through SeatGeek because they are completely secure. Now, we love SeatGeek so much here at Rising to the Occasion that we've teamed up with them to get you an amazing offer. You can use our code R2TO. That's R, the number two, T O and get yourself an amazing $20 off at your first uh, purchase. You can get $20 off your next purchase by using that code R2TO at SeatGeek.com or by downloading the SeatGeek app today. Check them out because SeatGeek is the most amazing way to find your tickets. So just download the SeatGeek app or visit SeatGeek.com, pick out those perfect tickets, and enter that promo code R2TO for an awesome $20 off. SeatGeek, life's an event. We have your tickets. All right, now let's roll into the show and let's get to it because we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to the NHL, and we want to get through it at a speedy pace and get you guys mm -hmm. all caught up. So if you're like me, if you're like Jeremy, you may not really jump into following the NHL extremely close until maybe football season is over. That's how I am. I know that's how Blake is, uh, even though right now it seems like Blake is jumping right into baseball with college baseball. But the NHL, it just kind of gets put on the back burner until right after football, mainly because... Uh, it's just not really a whole a lot of importance in the beginning of the season because you've got so many games to catch back up, kind of similar mm -hmm. to the MLB in that case. Yeah, um, but, true. but Jeremy, uh, let's let's start off with it. What team has kind of caught your eye the most uh, this far into the season? We're almost almost halfway, just it, about the halfway somewhere in there. It's crazy to me that we're. It feels like we're almost halfway, and it feels like the season just started like a month ago. But if I had to honestly give you an opinion on a team that's definitely becoming up in their eyes is the um how do i want to put this the team who thought who everybody thought shouldn't even be in the position they were and that was the florida panthers in my in my honest opinion the florida panthers they overtook the number one spot in the atlantic division over over boston which is crazy to think with how dominant boss has been playing these these last couple months they've just been playing lights out hockey but boston's been on a little bit of a down slump here and um they were playing against the la kings the other night and they were up by i think at least they were up by two at one point then the kings came back tied it up they went into overtime then the la kings they they won that game in overtime it was a really exciting game overall it was really cool to see the la kings bounce back and get it into overtime just to um, just to get a point out of that situation and then obviously went in overtime to get the extra point over the bees but looking at looking at any other team around the league New York is obviously Ms. strong they're number one in the metro um, in the West start, starting off they're kind of yeah, kind of alluding they're on, or kind of bouncing off of your your Florida Panthers talking about them. They, they really are. They're on a, such a tear. They're mm -hmm. looking so good in every game. Just the other night, we were just not talking about this. The other night, they 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 won like nine to three, nine, nine to three. two. Yeah. So just yeah, some amazing scoring going on. And what's crazy is looking back to last season, 
Last season, they had to fight and claw their way into the playoffs. Not going to be the mm-hmm. case this year. I feel like it seems no. like they're going to roll right into the playoffs and mm-hmm. they're going to be able to take it easy uh, going into the playoffs and then be able to kind of jump on uh, and really start fighting hard once they get back into the playoffs. So it's it's definitely not a bad thing to do it the way that they did last year. We saw that with them, the way that they were able to make it all the way to the, the finals and be able to make it to the Stanley Cup finals. But, you know, getting into the playoffs with ease, that's another great way to do it because you can get yourself against a better team, not having to fight your way all the way to the top like they did last year. So there's definitely, a, 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 you know, a, a plus, a uh, you know, a, an upside and a downside both both ways. But I kind of want to go over to the Pacific and look at the Vancouver Canucks because I, I don't know about you, but I would not have picked the Canucks to be number one in their, their division going into this far into the season. Uh, maybe maybe they're getting fluky in first 15 games. They're they're in the first. We talked about them earlier on in the season. Man, I just don't think they're going to hang on to that spot. But now they're this far into it. We're, we're over halfway, I think, by now, right? Mm-hmm. So, man, like, there's no way that they don't kind of keep a hold of, but like, right there in the top. I don't think they're going to fall below, below Edmonton, although I do want to bring up Edmonton, another surprising team after firing their coach, firing off on all cylinders. They've really bounced back this season. So that's another team. Um, so really just that Pacific division, that whole division is really shocking to me because, uh, you know, you, you've got you've got teams like the San Jose Sharks, who we all know aren't going to go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> what do you it, mean? It, they're it, winning the Stanley Cup. Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere. And then you've got other teams like I think they really I mean, you can talk about the Kraken, the Kings, the Oilers, the Knights and the Canucks all kind of in a race. Uh, you know, I think it's a lot tighter between uh, the Oilers, Knights and Canucks right now. But. Overall, I mean, you bounce all the way down to the Kraken, uh, and and you know what where they are in uh, fourth, fifth place. So, even in fifth place, they've got a shot to really bounce back. So that whole division, I think, is really shocking to me. But the Canucks, especially, uh, we've talked about who, how good the Knights are, but the Canucks uh, just even looking that much tougher. The Van- the Vancouver Canucks is definitely a team to where if you were just, you said it the best, you look at the beginning of the year or even before the beginning of the year. If you were to say the Vancouver Canucks were going to be number one in the Pacific Division, I would have called you stupid. <laughs> yeah, like, I, mean, I mean, go go put your money, go back in time and put your money on them winning the, the division. <laughs> I wonder what that would have been. Uh, oh that's, man, you'd be sitting pretty good for a payout if, overall. If there's a way for me to go back and check what the odds would have been, I don't know how they usually do that for ESPN and stuff like that. Whenever they post those stats, but if you know right. how to do that, uh, let us know. E- either do it for me or or show me how to do it so I can go back and see what the odds would have been. No kidding. Uh, so comment that down below if if you're if you're watching because I would be very interested to see what those odds would have been for the Vancouver Canucks to win their division. Absolutely, uh, that, that's that's insane. I mean, you look at the Vancouver Canucks like you were talking about the number one team in the Pacific. They've played 57 games. I know they're a couple games ahead of. Um, a couple games ahead of Vegas, and but they're, they're ten points ahead of Vegas, though. Yeah, that's the that's crazy. What's, that's thing. what's insane. They're only a few games ahead, but they're ten points ahead. That's mm-hmm. that's so crazy to look at in the standings and see where they're at. Uh, that's, that's why. That's why to me, I mean, they they have the most dominant lead uh, out of any team uh, in, in in their in their respective division right now. They've got the most dominant lead. And it's a team that you wouldn't have expected. So to me, that's why I feel like they've got to be the most surprising team in the NHL this season. Absolutely. I mean, like like you said, for point wise, Vancouver's sitting at eighty and Vegas is sitting at seventy. Like you look at any of of the other conferences. Like I'll I'll throw these out there. For example, um, Florida is okay. Well, Florida is number one, but it hasn't been updated yet. It shows Boston seventy seven points and Florida has seventy six. Now you look at the Metro. New York has 75 points, and Carolina has 69. Six points ahead. Yeah. Now, looking at the Western, Dallas has 76, and Colorado has 72. Yeah, so then, four points there. Then the biggest one, like you said, Vancouver has 80, and Vegas has 70. So I the mean, next the next highest differential in points the Metro. For, holding, for holding the first is, guess what? It's the Rangers. The Rangers. I love it. Man, I, I told you at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really sure. I didn't see, so I, I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. I'll, I'll admit to the off season to see what they did. Looking back, I didn't see a whole lot of off season moves that would have boosted the team. Uh, and then you talk about the fact, um, you know, just looking at, at where they came from last year, they, they came off of a really good season. Because they had Patrick post game. 
Yeah, yeah. They, they, they get rid of Pat, Patrick Post, I guess. Uh, maybe maybe he wasn't a good addition after all. I mean, all. hey, but, he did hit the post the other night, but it went in, so maybe he's <laughs> learning from his mistakes. If you would have told me that they would be holding on to this strong of a lead in the Metropolitan, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed that to be the case. Uh, and, and they're looking very dominant. Uh, they're mm-hmm. sitting there at 36 and 16, looking really good. Uh, man, it's 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 exciting to see it. Um, you know, and, and I'm happy for them. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of them. They're on a seven-game win streak right now. Uh, and if I'm correct, I think that's the longest win streak in the NF- NHL right now, too. Because uh, I um, think the, the next one up that I saw was five uh, from the Current the or Panthers. just in general this year? Uh, just this year. Longest longest win streak this year. Uh, Edmonton had that. Yeah, because, well, right, I'm just talking current. Because current, oh, current win okay. streak, the okay. current win streak right now is, is the Panthers with five. Uh, the, the Rangers on the longest current win streak. So uh, that that's an amazing thing to look at. Uh, and, and see how how good that the Rangers have been. So, got to yeah. be excited right now if you're a Rangers fan. I think that's a lot of fun to look at uh, and to, to see where they're where they're heading. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're not in an easy division at all. I think that Metropolitan no. Division is a tough one to get through. And even teams like you know the Penguins being on a down year right now, they're not and an easy team to beat. And- they're, they're, yeah, the, the Caps aren't aren't an easy team to beat. Uh, the Islanders right now are looking pretty good. Uh, they they just beat them. Uh, we were talking about that. They they had a, a really fun, really fun game over in the stadium series uh, against the Islanders, and and that one, man, it, it didn't feel like they were going to win. Uh, they end up com- completing the first three point comeback in an outdoor series history. So that was kind of cool to look at and to see that they they uh, they they made history on on that game. They able mm-hmm. to come back from a three point deficit. Uh, Zabinajad had a really good one with, with about a minute. 30 seconds left somewhere that in that clutch. range. Uh, 129 left, I think it was, in order to push him into overtime. And then you have uh, Panarin. Uh, you know, it, man. Our, our, yeah, Art- Artemi Panarin, man. He, he came right in. And if, if you're going to put the hand, uh, you know, I think that's a really good strategy that they use in overtime, and it works a lot. You, you put it in his hands with, with 10 seconds into overtime, he ends up scoring right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you just give it to him and let him do his magic. And yep. it's, it's bound to, to work if you keep on giving it to him. He's such a good sniper. Uh, he can just shoot from anywhere. So good with puck, uh, you know, great puck handling and being able to being able to find the open part of the net and being able to put that that puck right in the back of it. So definitely better than Patrick Kane uh, when it comes to that. Yeah, <laughs> not not in the post. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. But I, I want to flip the script a little bit. Obviously, I know we're talking a little about about the standings here and what what each team is is currently sitting at. But I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna flip the script a little bit. You may see this team in the Western Conference as a six seed, but with how they just played, and they just, they didn't just score a few goals, had some fancy plays or whatever. This is a game against the Vancouver Canucks from the from today actually. Well, for yet from yesterday for everyone watching this video, or, but um, yeah, it happened on on Monday. Yeah, then um. The Minnesota Wild, they definitely um, they might need to invest in some lights for the uh, for the goalie boxes, just because they lit the lamp just a few times. They lit the lamp ten times. Yeah, they might have burnt those lights out. Those lights. That's that what go I'm off. saying. They might need to run to Home Depot well, or wherever. And we just talked about it too. The the Canucks and how good they've been this season. They're very mm-hmm. surprising, you know, with how good they are. And you put up ten on them. That's man. That. Anybody who's who's not used to, to hockey, uh, I feel like in the last couple of years, you've been starting to see a lot higher scoring, like five, six points. Which is awesome. You don't see double digits. No. You don't see double digits. You just don't. We were talking about it. A couple of the teams that we saw here recently, we saw the Tor- Toronto Maple Leafs and uh, the Panthers both put up nine. That's incredible. But mm-hmm. now you've got the the uh, the Wild out here putting up 10. It was 10 to 7, so a very high scoring game. Both teams need to work on their defense. But the offense, uh, man, moving on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you look you look at the last several games for the Wild. Uh, you, you go down through. So they lost to the Sabers by one point. They beat the Coyotes. They they beat the Golden Knights at the Golden Knights. So in Vegas, yeah, you beat in them. Vegas. Uh, they That's beat the, the, the Penguins. They beat the Blackhawks. They lost by one to the Ducks and the Predators. Uh, but then they also beat the the Capitals, the Hurricanes, the Panthers. So they're 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 beating some really good teams in these last several games. They're they're they've had a lot of wins. They had a four loss uh, streak here a little while back, I think earlier last month. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so you know you, you see that that four game losing streak. You really need to bounce back from it. 
it's 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 been a big bounce back here recently. We talked about them firing their head coach, moving on from him. Now you, you come in and you're starting to see a little bit of life in the wild. Do you think that being this far back, because right now they're not too far back, um, they, they could really easily bump their way up to like number four. Uh, and with this much time left in, in, in the season, they could even bump up to number number two or three in their division. Do you think that's a possibility for the wild, the way that they've been playing here in the last you know six or seven games? It, there's a there's a possibility. Anything's possible just because of how much time is left in games. But my big thing is if you're going to be trying to get up to potentially the number four spot or even the number three I spot. Think, I think number three is reasonable because you look at the three teams above them. You've got right. Nashville, St. Louis, and Winnipeg. I don't think you're going to beat Dallas or Colorado. Both of those teams looking really good right now, and I don't nope. see them having a drop-off. But Winnipeg, St. Louis, and Nashville, all three of them very easily could kind of – you know, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna have some losses and choke in there yeah. here and there. And so Minnesota, if they go on a hot streak, personally, I think that's a that's a good chance for them to jump up to number three and Easily. work your way into the playoffs. And it's Easily. one of those situations, too. You're playing playoff hockey right now because you're trying to get your, your, your streaks going and you're trying to get hot right now. Absolutely. But, I mean, the big thing is if you're going to try and get to those situations, which is totally doable, I – Josh, you just said it the best, Josh. These teams could have the worst month, month and a half going into going into late February than the whole month of March. Anything's possible, but if you're gonna try and get to these situations, you need to have better defense and you need to help your goalie out in those situations. Just because looking at this game that we're just now talking about from the Vancouver Minnesota Wild game. It's one thing, like I said, to put up 10 points, but it's also another thing to have your goalie put up, put in seven points. Excuse me. Like, it, I've played hockey. You've played hockey before. It's one thing to play your natural position, but it's another thing to when you get caught puck watching or if you get caught flat-footed in the neutral zone, then you get these wingers that are just going to completely burn by you in the blink of an eye. But – it's it's definitely a good sign to see for these guys that it it's not a hard problem. Like obviously, it's that sounds a lot easier said than done. But yeah. it's it's definitely one thing that you need to get the puck in the back of the net. And if you can't get the puck in the back of the net, or if you do, if you do like one or two goals in this type of situation. You need to you need to try and do what you can a little bit more to to try and find a way to get that puck in the back of the net because it, you're not gonna you're not gonna climb the standings on ties or losses. You definitely yeah. need to find a way to get those wins and so you can climb those standings and try and make yourself a little bit easier for your team and your organization to try and host a playoff game or post off series playoff series, excuse me, or try and just get into that realm to where it's not going to be a first round walkout and just get swept four games to nothing. Just looking at this type of situation, you need to stick to playing your game and not just rely on key players like Kaprizov or um, the list can go on and on and on for the Minnesota wild. But um, another, so, even, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was, I was just going to say, uh, you know, because looking throughout, uh, like I said, too, it's just over past halfway. Uh, I, I was thinking for some reason it feels like it should be less than halfway. Yeah. Uh, you're right. It does feel like the season just started. But it's also because I feel like you don't really get the full swing of the NHL yeah. until like the, the, N the N NHL, N NHL N or sorry, the NFL and college football is over. It feels like it really becomes bigger right then. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for people like, like uh, you know, us that watch all sports, pay attention to all the sports, it feels like. Now is the is the biggest time for the NHL, and when when mm -hmm. you're first now get swinging in after uh, the football is over. But looking at it right now, we've we've had a good taste of every team in the NHL. We kind of know an identity for everyone. Of course, you have some teams like Minnesota who might be able to sneak their way in to the playoffs um, because it's still a lot of season left, and you might be able to squeeze your way up there. But uh, looking at it so far, uh, let's go ahead and make a pr prediction. Who do you have? We, we can say either just making it to the Stanley Cup final game uh, or who do you have winning it if you want to name off both. I kind of want to start off. I, I want to say, I'm, I, know, I know it's biased, but just on how, how good they're looking, I'm going to pick Rangers. the Rangers and uh, the Golden Knights. I think that'll be a phenomenal matchup between the two. Uh, and I want to take my Rangers it's because they, they look so so good right now. 
Uh, so I want to take the Rangers to, to end up winning it at all. If oh, that's, that's tough, but you're not wrong. Yeah. The Rangers. Yep. Easily I think both could those have teams are, are good picks too. I bet but, if you go right now, the odds are pretty similar on those. If I had to pick the one pick, I will, I will agree is I could see the New York Rangers. But my other team that I would want to mention, I wish I could say the Washington Capitals, but we're due to. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised seeing the Colorado Avalanche back in the back in the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I mean, mean they're, they're getting hot at the right time too. I mean, look at what they got. Obviously, Kale McCarr and some guy named Nathan McKinnon who just can't stop lighting the lamp. Um, Miko Ranson and um, even looking at their their goalie in the pipes. He's just been playing lights out. And I, I watched their game from the other night. And I tell you what, this Colorado team is freaking good. I'll say they that. Are. And, and they, mean, they've always been good too. And that's, you got, you got Kale McCarch controlling the blue line and he's one of those two way players. Who's not just sticking around the blue line. He has an unbelievable stick handling ability. He's got an unbelievable shot. Then, Looking onto other players, like I said, some guy named Nathan McKinnon who just always has a way to get the puck in the back of the net, whether it's off of a quick rush going through the neutral zone with his unbelievable speed or just picking cherry picking a corner and making it look simple. And if I were to try and do that same thing, I would hit the net, put the net above the goalie the same <laughs> Um Then, obviously, like I said, Mika Ranson, and he's right around the same area with – um, Nathan McKinnon and scoring. Um, but if I had to pick two teams, I, I will agree with you on New York. They could definitely be a team that can make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. But looking on the other side of the bracket, I want to sincerely say the Colorado Avalanche just because of their entire team, how they're playing, and their overall speed and how they play is just – And they're familiar with it. it. You miss it. Yeah, and they're familiar with it too. Yeah, they're familiar with getting there. Um, and – I, I will say the only reason why I'm, I'm looking at the Atlantic, I just don't see any of these teams doing it because I think they're going to beat themselves up. You, you talk about the Bruins, Panthers, the Leafs, and Lightning all, all right now uh, so close to each other uh, and, and really even going down to the to the Red Wings right now, which is another kind of surprising team this year to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they all look so good, and they're all so tight right there. I feel like they're going to beat each other up. Uh, and they're going to beat each other out of it. Whereas with the the other, you know, with the Metropolitan and, and uh, really, in, in, you know, over there in the, the Eastern Conference, the Metropolitan, I feel like, has the better chance uh, when you talk about either the Rangers, the Hurricanes, um, the Flyers looking surprisingly good, too. I do want to bring them up because Bobby they were garbage Barbie. last year. Absolutely yep. garbage and looking really good. But, man, it's it's fun. We're, we definitely have a lot to keep up with when it comes to the, to the NHL. We will definitely be keeping up with it. Uh, we're going to have to get into some baseball now because college baseball has, has started up. And, uh, hey, it's, There's already it's been, been some fun. upsets. Yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of fun so far. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure that Blake can, can, uh, can save some of his time for uh, talking a little bit of baseball, getting into baseball, and then softball. we got to talk about my Sooners here coming up, too, with their uh, just over 60 now. I think they're 60 or 61. 61, maybe, I maybe think. Maybe even 63 by now, man. I, I don't know. I'm losing track. It's a long winning streak. But anyways, we're not going to talk about it right now. We're going to make sure that we get to it very soon, though, because we've got a lot coming up when it comes to all these sports that are jumping in. So uh, we, it was very fun being able, being able to talk hockey and being able to bring hockey back into it, man. Uh, I'm heart. excited for this season. Like I said, my Rangers looking so good. It's always a lot more fun being, being able to cheer for a team whenever they're winning. So uh, definitely a lot of fun uh, overall in, in the NHL. So if you guys like this content, make sure to hit that like button down below. If you're watching YouTube, please hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe. Those are three very easy ways to support the, ch- the channel. Uh, and then if you want to support us even further, you can join and become a member today by clicking that link down below, becoming a member and supporting this show. Uh, what we want to do is we want to give that back to you guys, to all of our members by doing giveaways. Uh, we're going to create exclusive content for members only. Mm-hmm. And also for members, you can see all of this content before everybody else. So this episode, for example, you're going to have a whole day being able to view this before everybody else being able to see it on Wednesday. So we released it on Tuesday, but everybody else gets to watch it on Wednesday. So you get all of that extra time to enjoy this content before everybody else. We want to do so much more for you guys, but we need that support. So please uh, consider joining today. You can also go to rising2.com slash shop and check out all of our merchandise. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com slash shop. 
check out all of our amazing amazing merchandise and support us over there. Um, and if you want to support us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, you can give us a five-star review that helps us grow in the charts over there. So we thank you all so much for all of the love, all of the support. Catch you guys next time.